Okay, um, today I have with me Rico Weider, uh, who's Swiss German, and he's uh, in heavily involved in the mobile industry in Asia. Uh, today we're going to talk about sort of his journey in entrepreneurship and how he got started. He, uh, he's an entrepreneur and an angel investor. And um, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thanks. Okay. Thanks for, for having me. No problem. So to uh, those that don't know you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, and how you got started in uh, in entrepreneurship and just you know your personal and business path. Sure, sure. Um, I I went to university in Switzerland um, and joined a big company afterwards. Uh, started working with uh, Singapore Airlines um, back in Switzerland, where I joined the international management tree, management trainee program, um, which was very interesting for, I think, the start uh, in my career. Okay. But very soon I realized that big companies is maybe not the ideal thing at the beginning of my career. And I decided to found my own company with, uh, with fellow students from university that I knew before that did some other startups already. Um, that's actually how I got started in Switzerland. Mm. Okay. okay. So you'd say that... Uh your entrepreneurship thing has been with you since maybe you were college, or has it always been a part of you before that? I I did a lot of um, small stuff uh, in high school with friends. Uh, tried to develop products. Um, I built a three dimensional jazz board. Oh um, wow! And tried to yeah, and tried to um, sell it, uh, produce it, and. It was a big pain uh, in, in high school to find the parts to put it together. I, it ended up, I ended up with one prototype and uh, a couple of orders, but I never delivered because it was kind of too, it was plexiglass and everything. It was, it was pretty neat. I still had it, the okay. prototype. But in right. the end, uh, the, uh, yeah, the production turned out to be too complicated for a 16-year-old. <laughs> um, <laughs> The the uh, yeah that's I think one of the first things that did some web stuff in the nineties with uh, friends um, building websites for companies but uh, I think the first real step into entrepreneurship was after uh, after my um, after my first job and then uh, I think when um, I, within a few years I, I um, you start developing these skills of my my boss who worked. Uh, at Singapore Airlines as well. Um, when I left, basically, he told me that um, your third company is going to be successful, which I took quite as, you know, a little bit as an offense because I was just about to venture out into right. a new company. But looking back, I think it takes some time uh, and a lot of actuation. Maybe it's with the first company, but um, if you take if you take several steps into entrepreneurship, you definitely have to learn a lot and. I think that's what he meant. Um, yeah. It will it will take some time to be to be successful. Right. We, we'd love to have that Zuckerberg Facebook, um, you know, first start, first yeah. piece right away. Everything there goes well, but, but hardly happens. Yeah. Okay. No, I, mean, I, I definitely agree with you. It makes sense. So obviously, you've been involved in several startups. Um, uh, can you talk about some of the ones you've been in? I know there was this one called uh, is it uh, foodpanda.com? I'm not. Yeah. 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 And then um, yeah, it was just, so. What other startups have you been in, involved in? Um. So, so yeah, foodpanda was one. Um. So Rocket Internet uh, was looking for people here in Southeast Asia, um, specifically in Singapore. Um. To start out, Food Panda uh, in in the region, uh, they haven't done that before, so it was kind of the first first step into into that venture. Um, and they hired me and a friend of mine uh, from from Switzerland to to start this off uh, in five countries over here. Um, Food Panda was uh, now is in, in I don't know twenty plus countries oh, okay. over the world. Um, rocket internet style, they, they've blown it up uh, with a lot of lot of um, MBAs, entrepreneurs around the world. And that is that is doing doing quite well. Um, in other startups I've been involved mostly in tech and mobile um, startups, uh, meaning that um, yeah experimenting um, seed seed rounds uh, 
companies that are looking for building a new new way to use the mobile um, developments, mobile technology uh, to, to, to do uh, easier solutions or to bring up good solutions for the consumers. Um, namely, um, I've been involved in, in a company called Sently that is uh, right now um, <clears throat> delivering a, a kind of a uh, end-to-end um, SMS gateway. So test if you have a solution that wants to deliver a text message to your, your end user, your consumer, um, and you don't want to use any big uh, gateway solution that is quite expensive. Uh, in, in the US, you have Twilio, which is pretty um, pretty neat, um, but as soon as you go outside of, of the US, it's kind of hard to have this two-way communication uh, with, with the consumer over text message. So they've built something like that. Um, yeah, um, app space, uh, I've been involved in some apps, uh, so okay. what, what else do you want to know? <laughs> well, uh, um, well, the mobile industry, obviously, that, that's your uh, your niche. Um, why would you say it, it, it's something that's uh, lucrative right now? I know a lot of people are moving into that uh, path, and I'll start with the internet, and now a lot of people are getting all these apps and doing mobile things. So what about the mobile industry is... Uh, is so inviting, and why is it where the future is? Um, I, I think it's for if you look at the past ten years and what has uh, changed uh, the society and consumers consumer behavior. I think mobile has been a pretty pretty big trend that shaped how we interact with each other, how what what we do. I mean. It's not nothing new to anybody if I say that when you go on a subway, um, nine out of ten people are sitting there, uh, you know, playing around with their with their iPhone or, or Android. Um, in Singapore, where I live now, the, we have um, a very high mobile penetration. It's a small small country, but you can see the effects uh, that you know, the mobile really shapes uh, day to day what we do. Um, and it attracts a lot of entrepreneurs because it has become so easy to create an app or it has become very easy to create a company and build a product around this new device, um, be it a tablet or, or, or a phone. But the bigger picture, I think, is it's even, I, th- I think we're not where, where we think we can be with this, with, uh, with the, the phone. I think it's we, we're not at, at the end of, of this trend. We're more or less at the beginning in how we are connected mm-hmm. and how we use these devices. Maybe there is an end to the App Store where, I don't know how many apps there are in the App Store right now, but it's, let's say there's, there's uh, over a million possibilities on what you could build for, for your phone. Um, the, even if you have 10 tools to manage your um, you know, expenses and 10 tools to manage, uh, to text your, your friends and, and so forth, even if you go there, um, you would still have new products coming into your offline world. And I believe that anything that you do, you can basically connect it with, 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 with um, that mobile device. Um, let's take uh, you know, a dating service. Used to be offline, used to come online. Now you see a lot of apps going into the dating space um, on on your phone, and um, it might sound. I mean, it's it's kind of an, just a new way to communicate. It's just a new way porting online over to mobile. But uh, what I mean is also that if you go further and um, think in the mobile world, you can actually come up with a lot of new solutions that we haven't thought of. And I think that's very appealing to a lot of people. So you can break, you can disrupt a lot of industries by just being mobile only. Okay. Um, you, you mentioned like uh, the company where I work for now, and um, so the company is called Fixu, based out of Boston. Okay. And uh, I think we we see a lot of um, companies that are mobile only. There, um, in it, it is it is working for a lot of them to. Know, uh, break down an existing industry by just being mobile so that that old industry maybe have, has just come to online and then there are startups that just do mobile and they're, they're doing as well but they have a lot of growth you yeah. see a lot of yeah. Yeah. yeah 
Oh, yeah, and it's also really portable, so it's easy, uh, easy easier to uh, um, keep control of. All right. Um, so uh, before I, I go on the personal side with you, you obviously you run a blog. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know it's the Silicon Road. How did you get started in that? What is it about? What do you what do you hope to uh, uh, accomplish with that? Uh, I. I think my last blog post is from 2011, so uh, I, I wouldn't say that I'm very active. I said, so, yeah, <laughs> much I'm much more active on Twitter. Uh, but for I have to say, for um, uh, the reason why I started it was to basically like everybody to share what I what I had in mind, uh, what I wanted to write down, and um, it, I have never been a very frequent blogger uh, on on the Silicon Road. Uh, because usually when I when I have something in my mind when I want to share something um, I I basically share it with everybody um, but I never take the time to write it down uh, in like the correct academic yeah, fashion right really you want to bring something to paper um, so that's why I think why I don't have many blog posts in there but um, there are certain things that really sometimes really bother me. And I just want to really break it down, so that's when I it's when I post something. Yeah. But um, as I told you before, before we started recording, uh, I'd love to write more. Um, it's maybe also a little bit of a time issue, but um, it's more laziness than time, I think. <laughs> no, I definitely identify. With, it's more about consistency, because yeah, uh, it's about pumping out content. That's what I try to do. All right, all right. So personally, you are a Swiss German, lives in Singapore. You speak how many languages? Um, well, I'd, I'd say I speak three fluently. So that's yeah. English, English, German, German, and French. And French, okay. Yeah. And then the others are on the proficient level? Yeah, I, I learned Chinese uh, since I was in high school, uh, but uh, I think there's a lot of different proficiency levels in that language, so I wouldn't say I'm fluent there. Okay. Um, I am. I learned uh, Portuguese and Latin on top of the three, but uh, yeah, not business level. So. Wow. Uh, okay, that's a, that's a lot of languages. Was this something that was part of you growing up, or was this in the school system, or is this something you wanted to do on your own? I think throughout. So 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 we, yeah, we we start in school. Um, when you grow up in, in the German part of Switzerland, you usually have to take French. Um, if you Grew up in the French part. You usually have to take German uh, in in primary school. Uh, starts in primary school, and, and you can, if you really don't like it, you can you can uh, stop learning somewhere in the around uh, high school or college. But the um, I think the, the the main the main benefit growing up in Switzerland is really that you you kind of have to do it, um, although you might not like it. Mm -hmm. And if you if you Go into the right uh, school that focuses on languages. Um, you would have to start learning Latin as well. Yeah. Um, so the combination of French and Latin uh, and English gives you a very great base on vocabulary. Um, so if you are interested in languages, that's definitely the best um, foundation to to continue learning something else. Um, and I started learning Portuguese just because I, I realized that um, it is so similar to French and Latin. Um, if I look at Italian or Spanish, um, it's it's kind of it kind of makes sense when you when I read it. Um, so I just got curious uh, on how much would it take because to that point uh, I only knew that I have to sit inside school and learn like a couple hours a week, and that kind of was my language learning. So suddenly I realized, hey, wait, wait a second. If I if I do this on my own, actually it works too. So I got curious about it. Nowadays, I enjoy I enjoy just um, whenever wherever I go, I enjoy um, learning a little bit uh, of the language uh, wherever I live. And, uh, I'd love to continue that furthermore. And I can I recommend it to everybody. Uh, just uh, give it a try. It's not it's not hard. And it obviously really helps French, me. Right? Yeah, my mine, mine is French, and I think it helps me connect with people on a different basis. Maybe on the, in the airports, I see like in you know Germany, whenever I'm flying, and people just say, hey, "Can't speak English, but you speak French." 
But um, so with you, it's helped you connect to obviously many people in the business world. Definitely. And, and, that and, uh, uh, and, and it's, there's nothing better to connect uh, than through, through a, a local language. I think it opens people's hearts. Um, I, I don't know. Have you seen that video with a 20, 20 lingual, poly, polylingual uh, boy that speaks 20 languages? He was recently on ABC or something. Oh, wow. I haven't. Um, 20 languages um, of boy? Yeah, he's 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 uh, he's a kid that speaks twenty languages wow. from Farsi over to uh, French and everything fluent. Um, Japanese, he's learning Japanese at the moment. And the, in that video, so so the thing is, I I don't think that we need to learn twenty languages. But in that video, they that they that uh, they they should shop with him. He walks into a shop in New York and speaks Russian, and he goes to the next shop and speaks Farsi. Wow. And you can see that people, although they're I guess New Yorkers, if they grew up there, those people open up right away and he gets a much different reaction from them. Uh, I'm pretty sure that if I walked into that Russian store, I might not get the same, you know, treatment as right. he gets when he walks in there and yeah. speaks Russian. Ah, instantly so. makes you relatable. Now, um, I, I will, German is the next language I'm going to pick. It was either German or Italian, so I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to try and uh, work in that. But I just have two more questions. So one topic is skills. And I know, I remember you saying that you had, um, you know, added this path to your entrepreneurship journey where you started up companies and then it didn't quite go the way you wanted and then you continued. So in your journey, what, what, have, what have you learned? What do you think is the most important skill uh, that, you know, that, you know, I think it's necessary for anyone starting out in a, in a company? What skills do you think would benefit people? Uh, I think it's... Um it's curiosity. Uh, if if you start your company, uh, be it from a finance or you know accounting business or a lawyer business, mm -hmm. or to a tech company, something that disrupts the whole new industry. Mm -hmm. No matter what you do, um, I, I think to to excel, uh, you definitely have your professional skills. You know, you need to you know if you're you're organized, you're you know honest, all your ethics, etc. I think no matter how you run your business, um, if you want to either disrupt an industry or excel and you know uh, outcompete your uh, other companies, um, you have to find different ways on how you do business, uh, how you uh, make services better uh, or your product better to outcompete others. So I think a continuous um, unsatisfaction with with the status quo is um, definitely something you should keep on reminding yourself. Um, so I'd say curiosity. Uh, be it, um, let me just give you uh, two more examples. So so there's a term uh, all around growth hacking um, that yeah. is going around in the tech companies. People say it's a buzzword. Other people say it's it's an interesting uh, way to describe that kind of functional startup. Um, how I see it is, if you're if you're uh, if you say you're a growth hacker or if you're in marketing or have the marketing role of a company, um, your goal should be to squeeze every little thing out of out of your company, um, out of the data that you can collect from your users and the people that buy your product, and make it continuously better, continuously grow the company, right? And the, the only way you can do that is to be curious, to ask your clients what they enjoy, what they don't enjoy, look at the data and improve the product, improve your app or your you know e-commerce shop. So that, that curiosity kind of needs to be a skill. If you don't like that, then you need to do something else in that company, right? You need to you you, you will be holding back mm -hmm. the else or your business if you if you don't continuously push forward. Yeah. So basically a mix of curiosity and you have to have a passion for something that, you know, you can be able to mix that and try and go after that, basically. It's, yeah, exactly. And and I think the second second example for that would also be just in a very general perspective at the beginning. <clears throat> Usually you're not starting off with a company and you have a million dollar funding and, you know, everything's fine, you can hire 20 people. Yeah. It's usually you with, you know, some guys yeah. or little bit of money, so you will, you will have to do even the stuff that you don't want to do. So that curiosity part comes in where you, you just try to find the most efficient ways to do the accounting, to do that, and so yeah. forth. So okay. That's kind of, um, it's the nature of, of uh, running or starting a business. Okay, all right, this is the last question. So I'm, I'm 23, 
And um, there are many, you know, people out there that want to do, they're young or between under, maybe maybe 15 to 30, and they're trying to start their own business. And they may be thinking it's they're too young or they don't have the ability to do anything. What would you, what's the one advice you can tell them? Is it, you know, self-belief? Is it just don't be afraid of failure or something like that? So, um, I, I, I think I'm not in a position to, to give advice for everybody, right? Um, I'm, I'm 30 now, so I can tell you what I think about um, the, the, my time. Uh, if look, so, so when you turn 30, you kind of start thinking, did I save up already enough or what's going on? You know, it's, a, it's kind of a um, scary moment in a way, or it depends on uh, everybody on how they see age. Uh, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'd love to continue what I'm doing. Um, but, you know, the responsibility, um, thinking of, you know, retiring and all that stuff that kind of kicks in at some point. Okay. And I would say if you're in your 20s, don't even think about it. Just do what you love to do um, or whatever you want to try. If, 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 you, if you have mapped out, let's say you come out of business school um, and you want to take that path, either it's entrepreneurship or, let's say, going into cons- consultancy, banks or whatever. If you have your career mapped out, I'd, I'd say, yeah, do it. Because if you think this is what you love to do, if you love consulting, um, give it a try because it will be much harder to go back into it later. Um, in, but if, if you don't see that as uh, the path that you want to pursue, uh, I'd say, and, and you think... Startups sound cool. You want to join an accelerator, an incubator. At some point, you find it start a company. Um, give it a try because I think it's it's a great addition to business school or even you know a replacement for business school if you if you if you haven't um, if you studied engineering or something. I, running a company will put you into um, the situation where you have to get stuff done and uh, you learn a lot. So. I wouldn't think about it. My advice is to, well, from looking back, I would love to be, uh, you know, 20 again to say, okay, another 10 years where I don't really have to care about what's with my future. I can still have like a second start or, you know, if everything goes wrong, you can still do something else. Um, that's going to be much harder the older you get. I, I think from a from a mindset perspective, okay. uh, I think you can do that anytime, but responsibility grows at a later stage anyway. And now you're, just out of school, you're, um, yeah, you, you're, you, you love to soak everything in that's possible, and the startup gives you a perfect exposure to a lot of stuff. Okay. All right. Well, uh, thank you for your time, uh, Rico. I really appreciate it. Um, no problem.